Welcome back to another vlog in my amazing kick-ass Mackenzie Friends series. Today I will be discussing why family court 50-50 shared care is so uncommon and hard to get. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the Mackenzie Friends UK network and founder of the national campaign of hashtag light not hate. Please note, nothing I say constitutes legal advice because you don't need legal advice in going through family court. And you definitely don't need lawyers. All my views and opinions expressed are entirely my own. Let's do it. I want to start off by busting two myths. Myth number one, that it is your right as a parent to have contact with your child. You don't. In layperson terms, it is a right of the child to have a relationship with both parents if it is safe to do so. The only right you have is what is given to you through having parental responsibility, which excludes contact. Now, if you want to find out more about parental responsibility, then please watch my other kick-ass vlogs. Busting myth number two. A father has been denied child contact after separation and applies to the family court believing that the court will apply fairness and justice and reinstate that contact at the first hearing. That is often not the reality. The family court in relation to child arrangements is not based on fairness or justice. It's based on the factors of the child welfare checklist and nowhere in the child welfare checklist are the words justice or fairness. Further, judges at first hearings have very few powers or authority to order contact other than what is agreed by both parties by consent. So if the resident parent refuses contact at that point, there is very little a judge can do. Indeed, it can then take months and months to get to a point where judges can make orders unilaterally. You see, judges can only make orders based on evidence being presented at contested hearings which is a fundamental flaw in our unfit-for-purpose family court adversarial system. So, with those myths busted, we can now talk about why your application for 50-50 shared care is far, far more likely to fail than succeed. And it all goes back to a judgment from 2014 involving Lord Justice Sir Andrew McFarlane, who is now the president of the Family Court Division. With the case reference of M. A. Child, 2014, EWCA, Civ, 1755. It is still the case that 50-50 shared care arrangements between parents are comparatively rare in private law children cases. Research shows that a number of factors have to be in place. Practical matters such as the close geographical proximity. But above all... The couple have to be on reasonable or good terms so that the to and fro of everyday life for a child is accommodated without undue emotional fallout. Let's reflect on that carefully. It says above all, above everything. Not it's nice to have, but above everything. The couple have to be on reasonable terms. How many times going through the family court are warring parents on reasonable terms? The judge continues by saying this. Both parents have equal status, so a division of time 50-50 will remain, in my view, a rare order and only to be contemplated where there is some confidence that it will not work to the disadvantage of the child albeit that the aim is to give good quality and substantial time with each parent. So, applying the principles of this judgment that still stands today, there are two ways in which 50-50 share care can be undermined. The first way is as the non-resident parent to put a torpedo through your own boat. And this happens by raising acrimony, conflict and allegations against the resident parent, at which point Kafkas will cite parental acrimony that the non-resident parent isn't trying to move forward to positively co-parent. So 50-50 shared care is simply not possible as the parents cannot get along. 
The second way that 50-50 is undermined is where the resident parent can easily sync your 50-50 application with their own torpedo by simply throwing spurious allegations based on hate. The more conflict and acrimony they create, the less likely the non-resident parent will achieve 50-50 shared care. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the family court can be so easily manipulated. It's all too often one big game, fueled by family lawyers stirring the pot of acrimony and conflict for their own financial gain. Anyway, I'm not here to bring in my own personal opinions. If you want to listen to my fearless family court vlogs where I really speak my mind, please visit philsvlogs.co.uk. You see, in my kick-ass series, I just want to present information so, now I hope that you may understand why applications for 50-50 shared care are very rare and unlikely to succeed where there is conflict. But I've just got to throw this one in. And if you are daft enough to be paying for a lawyer, they will still happily take £20,000 off you, fighting your case to the death, already knowing that your boat is already sunk. You are better off putting that £20,000 on a bonfire. At least it would generate some heat. But better still, put it in ICES for your children's future education. That is eminently sensible and they will love you for it. Now, if you would like a one-to-one -one case review with myself, if you would like to find a McKenzie friend to support you in your case and for all of your family court solutions-based needs, please contact me at contactphil.co.uk. I'm Phil Kedge, the kick-ass McKenzie friend. See you again very soon.